Welcome back to Belinda for Blogs. I'm Justin, and this is a video series where we are editing our videos for our blogs with Blender. Uh, this is phase three, where we're getting into the core of the editing. Uh, uh, this is part two. In part one, we got rid of that nasty little outline that was around my silhouette there. Uh, and in this one, we're going to talk about um, uh, setting up to where we can see our background. We're going to move me either over to the left or the right, or however you want to do it and uh, do some fades, because I know you guys are probably itching to get in some transitions, and the fades are the most common. So, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Uh, we have B4B Demo uh, 0402 for our file. I'm going to save as, just like always. Um, hit the plus to 403. And now the first thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to mess around with these strips here just a little bit um, because uh, I'm going to bring the color down all the way here because I don't need that up there. And then I'm actually going to uh, grab and move the audio up so it lines up right, right under that uh, image strip there. And then I'm going to select the audio and click draw waveform so that we can see our waveform just like um, we had our video file and our audio file originally like that so I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit I think I can um, let's just slide that over just a little bit all right so uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the image strip and in order to move it all you have to do is come over here click image offset and it gives you these X and Y options and if you click and drag you can see voila or voila voila how do you know, how do you say voila cuz i'm saying it like ta da but you know uh andrew price always says that ta da and i don't i don't want to copy him i mean i kind of do but anyway <laughs> um so you can see that moves on on the x this moves it on the y uh just like that so pretty easy for that um so i'm actually put that back to 0 and um, there's another way you can do it, is if you select the image strip, shift A, go down to effect strip, and then add in a transform effect strip. And that will uh, be transforming this image strip. And now you can see our nasty little outline is back, but remember, uh, with our transform strip selected, go up here to the blend mode and change that to overdrop, and we get rid of that again. Okay, so now we've got a couple of different options here. We can uh, change the position just like before um, with the X and the Y. If we come down here, we can also do it if just hit image offset and then change the position there. But I don't need that. But here we have another option for scaling it. And you can either scale it um, individually uh, on the X and Y, or you can click uniform scale and then scale it up uniformly to fit into your uh, screen however you like like it to fit however uh, there is a slight problem or bug or whatever it is with a uh, blender and if you have an image that you import or your image sequence or whatever that is a different resolution than um, your your uh, blender resolution here or your video resolution and I'll show you what I mean so if I'm just do divide by two actually um, let's uh, just get rid of this here transform here select my image strip and we go divide by two enter and the same thing for this one divide by oops come on divide by to enter there we go so everything is just as it should be everything was divided in half for the resolution but if I go over here and I click image offset it jumps the image that I imported this image strip back up to its original dimensions and that wouldn't be a problem necessarily because then we could just move it over here like this like before and then you know, maybe not move it down on the XY, but let's scale it. So we make sure this is selected again, shift A, add in our transform and select the transform, come up here and do our little overdrop again and click uniform scale. 
And now let's scale it down. Oh, look at that. It only scales the part that we see. And then if we want to change the position, it only changes the position that we saw. And then in the viewport, what I mean is when we saw it in the viewport. And then um, same thing if I do image offset, it's only changing that little window there. So let's go back here and say, well, maybe we can adjust it here. Uh, well, we can, but again, you see, you just have, you still have that little window that uh, is caused from that transform strip to work in. So there is actually no way to uh, keep uh, this image offset checked and scale it in a way that um, that works unless your image is smaller and nothing has been cut off. But since um, since uh, if I if we go just go back to original scale since the original scale or the original offset is um, bigger than our resolution, it cuts it off there. And if once it cuts it off, it's really difficult to try to get that you know back. The only way you can do it is um, if we uh, uncheck image offset from our image strip here, and now you can see uh, we can scale it. And you're like, well, what's the problem with that? Well, there isn't a problem with that if your image and your resolution are the same um, aspect ratio. But let's say you're you're doing a different aspect ratio, uh, and you maybe have a screen that you want a little bit bigger like this on the Y, well that stretches out the whole thing. And um, without doing some, some, you know, kind of just guesswork here, so you just have to like guess and see what the original is like. And maybe you could do a little bit of calculations here with math. I tried that. Um, it didn't really work. I mean, you can play around with that if you want, but um, it's really, it's really, you know, just up to like really fine tuning and trial and error. But anyway, um, the only way to get it to the exact dimensions is again to click that image offset. But again, now we're in the same predicament we were before because if we try to scale that down, it cuts everything off like that. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, the best practice is to just make sure you are making images for your final resolution and make sure you know what your final resolution is going to be for so it's not cut off. Even if you do it smaller than the resolution, your final resolution will be better. Um, you know, when you scale it up, it'll probably look a little bit blurry, but at least it won't be cutting this off. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to get rid of that, and we're just going to uh, actually, because um, I don't need to scale it, just times two, and then, uh, oh, did I divide by two? I did. <laughs> times four times two. Oh wait, no, 1920 by, I think it's 1080, right? That's the way, that's the one I want. Um, so image offset, I don't want any image offset on the Y. There we go. So that's good spot right here. So you can, you know, do it on the left or the right or the middle, however you want to uh, move your little guy or girl. So yeah, I like that. Um, so let's uh, get into our background. Um, so what I like to do with the background is just import it from an image editor, such as GIMP, which I have GIMP. Um, but another way you can make images, which I think is actually a lot better, is with a presentation software. And a free presentation software that you have at your fingertips is Google Slides. Uh, so I'm not going to show you how to get Google Slides. You have to have a Google account and all of that stuff. It's fairly easy. There's plenty of tutorials on that. But once you get Google Slides, you can also use uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, of course. But PowerPoint doesn't actually give you the same tools that you'll need for transparency. So um, I use Google Slides because it's really cool what you can do. Anyway, so uh, I'm opened up in Google Slides now. I'm just going to close the themes and with my... Um, first slide here I'm actually going to just select and delete these subtitle things and now I have a, a white 
background. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is change this to, uh, let's just label it background because I am boring. Background. And the next thing I want to do is because we are working with um, 10, 1920 by 1080, I want to make sure that that's going to be the same exact size. So going back to my slides, file, page setup. Um, and where it says widescreen, go down, click it and go down to custom. And then instead of inches, go to pixels. So we have 19, 960 by 540. Just do 1920 by 1080. Okay, there we go. Now we have the exact dimensions that we need. Okay, so I'm just going to make a, a really rough copy of uh, kind of the background that I had in my promo video uh, just to show you kind of what I did. I'm not going to build the whole thing. I'll let you experiment with that. But uh, just go to Shapes here and um, drag out a um, rectangle. And right when you hit that edge, you see that red uh, line. That means you hit that edge. And then I'm going to just drag this over to where you see those uh, two double um, lines at the bottom there. That means I'm hitting this edge over here too. Okay, so if I select out of that, you can see I've just got a, a white box with a gray outline. Uh, I'm gonna select it again and do the fill color as uh, a dark gray. And then I'm going to uh, select the border color and do transparent because I don't want a border on there. And this is one of the best things that I like about Google Slides is if I slide this, just click and drag, uh, it'll show me right where I am on the middle, on the vertical and the horizontal. So this is just slide that along here and right about here. And now I'm completely centered and I'm gonna let go. So now I know this box is completely centered in there. Now I'm going to add some text. So go here. Blender for blogs, go like that. Um, and then I'm going to just bring this in a little bit like this and bring this up to the top, bring this up to the bottom, down to the bottom and go up here for a line. I want to align it in the middle uh, horizontally and then also vertically or vice versa, whatever. Change the text color to white and then we'll do bold and change the size to something like, let's see, 48 and eh, maybe a little bit away. We can go 60 maybe. Yeah. So keep it there. And again, this is just a rough sketch. Um, just to see what it's going to look like here. So I like that. Um, now I want to export this as an image. So I go up to File, Download As, and then Download as PNG Image, and it says Current Slide. So it's only going to uh, download the current slide as a PNG. It won't download all of the slides at the same time. Uh, there's a add-on you can use for that. But um, this will only work if you are online. Um, if you are in offline mode uh, and you're not connected to the internet, it will not work. And that's frustrating. But tis what it is. It is what it tis. Can you use tis in that phrase? I, I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> so click PNG image. I'm just going to save this as background. And uh, because that's what the title of the slide is, that's what it shows here. You might have to change that if you want it to uh, be named differently. And I click save. All right, so I'm going to go back to Blender. I'm going to go to the beginning here. And I'm going to do Shift A, add in an image. And navigate to my um, graphics folder. And open up our background. And click Refresh Sequencer. And it doesn't do anything because it's added all the way at the bottom. Uh, I want it on, I think this is 12, 11, 10. I want on the 10th channel so i'm just going to hit 10 there and there we go we can now see our background behind our image sequence here and that's what this is here um, i'm going to hover over this control c to copy that and then up here in the length control v 
to paste that so it's all the way in our full frame range. All right, so now I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm just going to actually uh, bring that background down just a little bit because uh, we're going to be putting some other things in here. Um, and again, I'm just going to probably switch this background out with the one that I made before, but that just gives you a little bit of an introduction how you can quickly go about making um, background shapes and colors and uh, text and stuff for the, all the backgrounds that you want to use. And we'll definitely get into it a, a little bit more. I won't go into a lot of detail of how I make everything. Um, you'll just have to practice, but I will show you um, some tips and tricks that I, that I used. Okay, so I think this video has gone long enough. Uh, I'm going to leave it here, and then uh, in the next video, we'll pick up with the fades. So I will see you over there.